Welcome back. Ever wanted to quench your thirst for knowledge and history by visiting the sites you're interested in? One historical site of interest to in many people across the world is Islamic Spain. What can we learn by visiting Islamic Spain? What does this Islamic civilization Europe have to teach us today? Let's talk to Tariq Mahmoud, founder and managing director of Andalusian Roots, a family-run business that has been organizing tours to Islamic Spain for over 15 years. Let's hear what he has to say. Welcome back to the show, Tariq. Thank you. So continuing on our conversation uh, from last week, of all the places that you know people could travel in the world today, why would you suggest Spain as a destination? Uh, of all the places, Spain is uh, should probably be number one destination because uh, of its history uh, for a number of reasons. There's not just one reason. Uh, obviously, because it's really beautiful. The place mm -hmm. is really amazing. Uh, but secondly, the history is so important because they're so many lessons is in particular with what's happening today the climate that we live in today there's lots of parallels there's lots of lessons that we can take from it but also uh, simply the fact that going to see a place where uh, you have monuments you have uh, you know cuisine you have the character of the people you have so much which tells you that islam has been here for such a long time is uh, just simply mind-blowing. I mean, you can stand in and lecture somebody and say, well, okay, you know, Islam has been here or Islam has contributed to Western civilization. But to actually go and see tangible things, touch, feel, smell, uh, that's a completely different concept. And it really brings it home that, uh, yes, as Muslims, we have been here. Uh, so for Muslims, it's really, really important to go and connect with that history and uh, have a sense of belonging here. Uh, for non-Muslims, it's again really, really important because uh, non-Muslims, people in the West are being made to think that Islam is the other. It's something strange. It doesn't belong here. And we're all, because it's strange and because it's the other, we're all being bombarded with this like clash of civilizations because we are so different. Uh, but yet the reality is something completely different, that the Islam that was present in Spain was indigenous. Uh, again, one of the things that we're like kind of brainwashed to think is that when somebody mentions the word Islam or Muslim, we automatically think East, Brown, Black people. That's very uh, true. And we're, we're programmed to think like that. Uh, yet this Islam, which was here for 1300 years, was very indigenous. So these people were white, European, blonde-haired, blue-eyed people. Um, and 80% uh, of the population at one point was Muslim, majority of which was indigenous. Only a handful of people from the Muslim world came and uh, settled in Spain. Because you have to remember at that time, uh, the third world was the West, and the first world was the Muslim world, Baghdad and Damascus. So when Spain was conquered, you wouldn't have had people migrating from the first world to come and live in the third world. So when Spain was conquered, only a handful of people came because nothing was happening in the West mm -hmm. at that time. So for that reason, it was indigenous, it was white, it was uh, blonde-haired, blue-eyed, European Islam. And for that reason, for non-Muslims people in the West, for them to go and understand that this is part of their history, Islam is a part of their history, and it directly contributed to Western civilization. Now, what does traveling to Spain and just travel in general mean to you as it relates to your work? Uh, when we first uh, set up the company, uh, we wanted Sorry, what, to can you briefly explain what your company is? Because I didn't do that, so okay. I'll leave it to you. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, our company is Andalusian Roots. Uh, we are based uh, in the UK, but we operate in Spain. Um, we set up with uh, 15 years ago, and it's specifically to highlight the history of Spain. Uh, we're not a general tour company, holiday company that you can come to our site and uh, say you just want a holiday to such such destination. We s uh, specifically operate educational tours. We do a lot of youth work. Um, and as I mentioned, it's based on uh, the Islamic principles of travel in Islam. We didn't want to set up a general travel company. It had to be based on what are the principles of travel in Islam. So what, what are the principles? Okay, well, the main principle of travel from very early days in Islam was to seek knowledge. So uh, in Islam, we have a big culture. Right from the beginning, we were instructed to seek knowledge, to gain knowledge, to look for knowledge. Wherever we find it, we should take knowledge. There's no contradiction uh, between knowledge and Islam. Uh, 
um, and uh, that has always been a big part. Initially, Muslims started to travel uh, to collect the hadith. So what happened with Islam was a very unique phenomenon that you had other civilizations, but they grew very, very slowly over a long period of time. What happened with Islam was that it just like a flash, it spread out throughout the whole world. And uh, it took over huge territories. And uh, the people who were around the Prophet Sallallahu uh, peace be upon him, they um, spread out throughout the world. And there was the fear that the knowledge that they had of the sayings of the Prophet, the actions of the Prophet, would be lost uh, or corrupted over time. So the Muslims were conscious of this, so they made an active effort to make a collection. So the science of the collection of hadith started. So they started to travel wherever, wherever they knew that people who were around the Prophet were to collect the hadith. Then as they were traveling, they would fall upon other knowledge, Greek knowledge, Roman knowledge, Indian, Chinese, etc. And uh, this became a passion and the Muslims just started to uh, go crazy about it basically, wherever they could find knowledge and then uh, this is where this developed from. So the culture of traveling for the sake of knowledge developed and it, there's a specific word for it, it's actually called Rihla. Uh, and Rihla is an, a unique Islamic concept to go on a specific journey to gain knowledge. And then we wanted to combine that with uh, history because in Islam history is really, really important. Up to one third of the Quran is stories of the past of nations of the past, prophets, etc. So God has put a huge emphasis on history for us to learn from. So history is crucial for us. We must look at that. So the tours we wanted to develop, we wanted to combine the two aspects, uh, travel for the sake of knowledge mm -hmm. and history. What are elements of youth work that, you, that are important to you that you've included in your work? Uh, our main work is youth work and we started the company off specifically uh, as uh, for youth work, to bring young Muslims in particular. At the time it was from the UK, but now it's grown. Uh, we bring young people from all over the world now. Is but that a particular focus that you made on your part early initially, on? Initially, yes. Because uh, why did you do that? Because um, it builds confidence in young Muslims, because as I mentioned, there's an identity crisis going on at the moment uh, for young Muslims. On uh, one side, they want to connect with their Islamic identity, but then on the other side, the rise of Islamophobia, uh, the um, Western culture, the attraction of Western culture. They're trying to find out where they belong and uh, there's a clash going on. Um, so they're trying to find this bridge and we believe that this is the bridge. Uh, it, we make a historical connection that goes back 1300 years that gives us a sense of belonging that as uh, Muslims we have been here a long, long time, made huge contributions and we have just as much right of being here as part of society uh, and as of being accepted as anybody else. In some cases, maybe more so uh, if you look at the contributions which have been made by Muslims. Uh, so for a young Muslim to go through that experience, going from an environment where daily, constantly you're being bombarded with all negative stuff about Islam and Muslims, uh, then suddenly you're transported to this place where Islam is just like so amazing. Even non-Muslims are walking around amazed by what Muslims uh, achieved here. So for the first time, these young people are walking around where they can be proud, be positive about uh, being a Muslim and what Muslims achieved. And for the first time, they're seeing non-Muslims being impressed by what Muslims did. So this gives them um, a lot of inspiration. What can we learn from what Islamic Spain went through and how it applies to us today? How Islam and Muslims are being presented is as, as if Islam and Muslims have just arrived here for the first time and uh, we need to look at Muslims with suspicion, you know, they've just arrived, we don't know how they're going to behave, we don't know uh, what they're about, um, so we need to treat them with suspicion. Um, but the reality is something completely different, Islam came once before and it did some amazing things. But towards the end, uh, you know, it was here for 800 years ruling. Then when Spain and Granada fell, there was this slow and steady stripping away of the Islam of the Muslims that were there. So um, Islam practicing their religion, practicing their deen, practicing their uh, way of life became more and more difficult. This didn't happen suddenly. So new policies were introduced. 
Uh, so, for example, hijab bans, um, beards weren't allowed, you can't pray anymore. So this was like um, a process. It's like we're going back in time now. We're, we're going back in time. And then you would have like, you know, uh, eventually, uh, and also a question of identity, they would be asked, uh, well, they were eventually forced to convert to Christianity. So for a period of nearly 150, coming on to 200 years, you had a community which was known as the Moriscos. These were secret Muslims. So on the outwardly, they would pretend to be Christian, but inwardly, as much as possible, they would continue to be Muslim. So with the pressure that is being put onto the Muslim community now, uh, the negative media attention focus on, on Muslims, politicians now, now, I mean, like, you know, Muslim bashing has, has become mainstream. Uh, it's becoming socially acceptable. So we are now in the early stages of becoming Moriscos. And what do I mean by that is that now we're starting to change our behavior. So in certain environments, in certain places, we behave differently because we don't want to be seen as Muslim. So when we're in our Muslim environment, we're more comfortable. So this is only, unless we don't recognize what's going on uh, and learn from history, the dangers are that eventually where is it going to lead to? That our, our next generation, the generation after, are going to start leading double lives. Uh, when they're outside, they're going to be forced to behave in a certain way. They're not going to be allowed to uh, show their Islamic identity out outwardly. Um, and only in certain places we're going to be able to practice our religion. And then eventually maybe we're going to be stopped from doing that as well. So we need to make sure history doesn't repeat itself. And how do we, just ending on a positive note, because you know, Islamic Spain had a downfall, how do we make sure we don't have a downfall? <laughs> okay, well we need to look at uh, what was the success of uh, Muslim Spain. So in the early days they did some amazing things. And one of the things that we learned from history is uh, the Muslims historically have always been brilliant at integrating. Going in and taking on local culture, local traditions, and there's one rule that Islam has always had, and we're having a problem with that at the moment. We're not, we're not taking that on board. One rule that Islam has always had is that whatever you find, wherever they went, whatever they found, as long as it didn't contradict the fundamental teachings of Islam, we can take that on board. We can make that part of our religion. Um, so it doesn't matter whether it's architecture, whether it's food, whether it's dress, it doesn't matter what it is, we can adapt that to our uh, beliefs and our way of life. So a typical example is, um, I usually give this example, is say for example mosques. Uh, if you take a snapshot of mosques around the world, uh, are they all the same? No. They're completely, completely yeah. different. So wherever the Muslims went, they adapted the local. So in India they took on the Hindu domes and the, uh, you know, they adapted those mosques. The Ottoman ones are the Byzantine ones. You go to Africa and you have an African version of a mosque. You go to China, you have a Chinese pagoda, which is a mosque. And uh, now that Muslims have come to, uh, to the West, uh, for example, I live in the UK, and then you will have a row of terraced houses um, and typical English estate. And smack bang in the middle is a green dome and obviously sticks out like a sore thumb yeah. and uh, <laughs> you know it doesn't belong there it's not part of the environment of course the local community is going to feel as though you, you're trying to impose something upon them if we adapted the mosque to the local architecture then they would feel as though this belongs to them it's part of them as well and they'll accept you more and this and this is just an example that this is what we need to do become part of the society there's nothing wrong with us uh, being part of the societies that we live in we need to adapt, we need to change things, and we need to contribute. The Muslims, one of the, um, the, the best things that they were able to do was contribute to society. They were able to change societies for the good. And uh, that's what we actively need to be doing. But not just doing, we need to be seen to be doing that. Uh, people need to see that we are changing society, we're improving things. And when you start doing that, then society starts to accept you and realizes that you're not aliens, they're all going to do strange things. And this is very hopeful, very inspiring, and a very good lesson in terms of really understanding history to a practical day life. Thank you so much for your time, Tarek. Thank you for inviting me. Hey, YouTube. We hope you benefited from this video. If you liked it, or if you didn't, let us know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning more, check out some of our other videos. And don't forget to subscribe so you can get new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday.